Is it time for a new way to produce our food? More sustainably? Changing to a method so effective that NASA thinks of growing veggies on space missions with it? No, this is amazing, no? What if we could forget about conventional farming and grow our own food in our neighborhoods and reduce the carbon footprint of our diet? It's called aquaponics and some scientists see it as the way to unburden our ecosystems. How that could work out is what we're checking out today with the help of an old warehouse, a salad and some fish. But why does our current way of growing food need to change again? Monocultures and the excessive use of fertilizers and pesticides lead to enormous degradation of entire ecosystems and biodiversity. For one thing, agriculture contributes to roughly one-fifth of all emitted greenhouse gases globally and roughly half of the world's population experiences severe water scarcity during at least one month of the year. Agriculture currently accounts for 70% of all freshwater withdrawals globally. But there is a farm in Eindhoven, Netherlands, that claims to be able to tackle all of these problems. This looks amazing. <laughs> you don't expect it, eh? In an no. old, uh, old uh, milk factory. <laughs> it looks like a, like a spaceship, actually. <laughs> what is this? Yeah, this? So this is an aquaponic farm. This is Tim Elfing, co-founder of the startup Food Farm. In this small greenhouse in the middle of the city, Food Farm is currently growing three types of salads, up to 200 kilos per week, but using 90% less water than conventional farming. For example, on a hot day on the countryside, you have this water cannon that shoots water like boom, 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 boom. Um, and so much drinking water gets lost because of that, uh, or spilled. And in this system, because it's so closed and the water gets recycled. In the indoor greenhouse, water is only lost through evaporation or through the amounts the plants need. This is how it works. First, the seeds have to sprout, like any seed in typical soil. Oh, tiny ones. <laughs> These are the, yeah, the little babies already. Uh. <laughs> and then they stay in here for four or five days, they get enough water. And then after four or five days, they go inside of the regular farm. The plants grow on these styrofoam plates with only their roots in the water and without any soil. After six weeks, they're ready to be eaten. Oh, this is amazing, no? It's amazing, yeah. And the beautiful thing is it's hyper fresh. So that's it? Of course not. The secret of this farm literally swims in the water. The reason why we're here is that this is a very special farm, not just a usual greenhouse. All these leafy greens grow in symbiosis with fish. Aquaponics is a combination of aquaculture, meaning fish farming, and hydroponics, which is the cultivation of plants without soil. And the ingenious thing about it, the two systems form an almost perfect ecological cycle. 180 fish produce a lot of poo but this also contains a lot of nutrients. These carbs nourish the vegetables. The water, which is rich in fish manure, is pumped through these pipes into a tank. Here, bacteria, which occur naturally in water and soils, are cultivated. They convert the potentially toxic ammonia from the fish poo into nitrate, a natural fertilizer plants need to grow. Here, the plants absorb the nutrients, filter the water, and return the clean water to the fish pond. Tomatoes, lettuces, eggplants and a wide variety of vegetables and plants can be grown this way. In theory, even growing cereals like wheat and corn is possible, but due to the high investments needed for such production, it's not profitable replacing the production of these crops with aquaponics at the moment. Multi-annual crops like apples, oranges, tea, coffee or cocoa don't grow in this system. But there are still many others that potentially do grow here. Depending on the type of fish and vegetables, some of them need little or no fertilizer. Okay, now a little salad, come on. We don't need to have any pesticides. So, um, yeah, there's no natural uh, predators coming in because it's so controlled over here. Um, that's why it's all without, uh, yeah, stuff that is unhealthy for our body, for example, that sometimes comes in when we consume other vegetables. The reduction or potential elimination of pesticides use comes as the system is highly controlled and separated from the outside. 
if pest secure, experts recommend organic pest control as synthetic chemicals can hurt the fishes and the system's ecological balance. Since the production of synthetic fertilizers makes up to 50% of energy use in commercial agriculture, its reduction has an immense impact on the environment. Because energy for artificial lighting, especially in northern countries, is a main factor in terms of costs, as well as electricity for ventilation and water pumps, growing in energy-efficient greenhouses and using renewable energies is of utmost importance for profits and long-term sustainability. As technical as it may seem, the idea of a water and nutrient cycle between fish and plants is thousands of years old. One of the first artificially built environments using aquatic ecosystems for agriculture can be found among the Aztecs in Mexico. In shallow rivers, they built ginampas, floating multi-crop fields of piled up earth and rotting vegetation. In the middle of the 20th century, corn farming with this system was estimated to be three times more productive than conventional farming in the US at the time. In China and Southeast Asia as well, growing rice and fish on the same land has a tradition that goes back centuries and is still being used in some places today. Some scientists describe it as one of the most ecologically sound and efficient food production systems there is. Right. Okay. <laughs> oh God, they come. Well, basically, you don't need antibiotics at all? No, you don't need it over here. Why? Because the water gets cleaned so well. By creating a closed water loop and giving the fish four times more space than in organic fish farming, Tim says the creation of a healthy environment for the fish is much easier, making pests less of a problem and easier to handle if they occur. Unlike in other aquaponic systems, these koi carps are not bred to be eaten. They will be sold to koi carp collectors who are willing to pay considerable sums for the animals. After a pilot phase, Tim and his partners might change to large-scale production and edible fish in the future. This is where most of the potential of this circular system lies. Along with livestock, fish are a major source of animal proteins worldwide. At the same time, overfishing is one of the biggest threats to ocean ecosystems. Aquaculture could be a solution to this. Over 50% of global fish consumption already originates from aquaculture, but its wastewater is not used, which puts a lot of pressure on the environment. Making aquaculture more efficient by growing mostly vegetarian fish like tilapia and creating value with the excrement instead of waste is key. If you have 10 liters of water, you can usually use uh, produce 2.5 gram of fish in a closed recirculation system. With a fully equipped aquaponic system, nowadays you can uh, go for up to 100 gram of uh, fish and you can at the same time uh, produce 500 gram of tomatoes. This is Werner Kloas, aquaponics research veteran at the Leibniz Institute of Freshwater Ecology and Inland Fisheries. In his view, aquaponics is not the only way to make major changes in our industrial and highly specialized food production. Even low-tech, small-scale setups can make a difference for families or communities. For example, in developing countries in Africa, Asia or Latin America, where resources are scarce and climate change is worsening the situation. This system works fine in, in our uh, environment, in our context. This is Abdus Salam. He's researching on aquaponics at the Bangladesh Agricultural University. On his rooftop, he is growing some tilapia fish, his own papayas, eggplant, spinach, okra and oregano. The people who have got a roof, suppose 100 square feet, only 100 square feet, he can supplement almost 70% of his vegetables round the year. Round the year, 70%. Around 70% of the global population is going to live in urban areas by 2050. Growing in our cities would unburden our soils, cut down transport emissions and lead to less food being lost on its way from the field to our markets. So far, 14% of all food is lost due to insufficient cooling during transport or bad infrastructure. With a $100 system, Salam already sees a lot of potential for self-sufficient urban farming in his country, giving them access to more sustainable food produced with clean water and little to no use of fertilizers and pesticides. 
I had a system that I produced four crops in a year and one fish crop. Fish, we can get uh, five to seven kilo of fish and uh, we can have almost uh, 30 to 40 kilo of vegetable. Lift off of Space Shuttle Atlantis on a mission to build, resupply, and to do research on the International Space Station. The potential for growing very efficiently on small spaces even led scientists from NASA to investigate the opportunities to use aquaponics for food production on future long-duration space missions on the Moon, the International Space Station ISS, or on Mars. To sustain life in space, food and water must be grown and recycled using the elements found within the system. Even though there are still many challenges and questions that haven't been answered, some scientists believe that this technology could potentially contribute to creating a sustainable presence beyond Mother Earth. Back in the greenhouse, plants are already growing. They are harvested on the same day they are needed and they are delivered directly to organic food stores and restaurants all over the city. Through a much more resource-efficient production, here prices can compete with conventional produce. Since their production started recently, food farm is not yet making big profits. But demand is picking up and they have already plans to increase their production in the future. Globally, the market for aquaponic products is currently around 600 million. Compared to a global agribusiness industry worth $5 trillion, it's still relatively small. Major hurdles to starting mass production include high initial investment requirements, the necessity of specialized technical know-how, knowledge in microbiology and fish farming expertise. Even though many species potentially can be grown with aquaponics, it's not yet a solution to growing everything we need. I think for, for food security, for all of us, we need the big facilities and that's my vision. You will not have uh, systems just producing one part or the other uh, part, only fish or plants, so that we will have really uh, the big uh, combination systems. Let's see if one day there will be an aquaponic farm on my rooftop. By the way, if you like farming, there are plenty of DIY options on social media on how to build your own aquaponic system in your own apartment or outside on the balcony or in your garden. You can find some examples in the description below. So what do you think? Is it realistic to see aquaponic systems where you live soon? If you liked the video, hit the subscribe button. And please give us your opinion in the comments.